We're continuing with our series on the review of the government's performance in 2019, but we're taking another angle to this discussion. Just before the break, we had Mr. Shegun Shomi, a member of the People's Democratic Party, given his view on how he thinks this administration has fared so far in the year 2019. On the other side, let's get another angle. We have Mr. Femi Adishin, the media advisor to the president, joining us tonight on the program. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. I know you were listening to Mr. Shomi and some of the issues he raised. He was quite critical, and that's putting it mildly, uh, about this administration so far. Let me just first get your response to some of the issues he raised. We talked about anti-corruption. He also brought up issues of the economy and some other issues. So let me get your response. How do you respond to some no, of the issues raised? I, I, I had him playing to the gallery, and I would rather not respond to all the things he said because they are neither here nor there. I, I also saw you trying to caution him in his wild statements and allegations. So uh, I, I'd rather that we just go ahead. Are you, and, are you dismissing some of the statements he complete, made? Because completely. some Nigerians might think he's made valid points. Co completely. I'm dismissing everything he said. So he brought up the issue, for example, of the GDP growth, saying, I mean, it cannot be counted you, as, you, as you, a win you, for this administration. You are trying to bring what he said back through another door. I don't want to respond to him. Let's talk about what we need to talk about. But right. I won't respond to Shegun Shomumi. And you said he is spokesman of a Tiku campaign team or something. Do you still have any campaign team? For 2019. For, is... for 2019. Right. Okay, so by, by the time 2019 ends in another nine days, that portfolio expires. Okay. Uh, Mr. Adishina, <laughs> perhaps what you want to respond to is uh, a major issue that came up over the weekend, the United States uh, statement about human rights in Nigeria. And uh, according to the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom Report, I believe you have seen that report and the rating it gave Nigeria concerning, yeah. you know, religious issues. In fact, it says, let me just take a quote from the document, quite large document, saying the Nigerian government at the national and state levels continue to tolerate violence and discrimination on the basis of religion, or belief and suppress the freedom to manifest religion or belief. Now, this is quite damning from the United States government. An opinion which is yours, uh, we may not necessarily think so. Elijah Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Information, has responded to that, and I think his response suffices. Or what I'll just add is that the United States itself has enough to chew, solving its own problems. Eh? Not to talk of pognosing into that of another country. No man, no country, nobody has appointed them the policeman of the world. Let them face their own issues. When you say pognosing, I, I remember yes. a few months ago, our president traveled to the United States, you know, to purchase equipment. We understand some Tucano jets were on the deal. So if on one hand we have agreements and deals, I, I, I'm out with thing. the United States government. <laughs> now, when the United States gives an advisory, a statement such as this, do you think we should also dismiss they, they, that? They are not the same thing. If we do business with them, government to government, we want to acquire some, uh, uh, so, 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 some fighting machines, uh, so to speak. It's not the same thing as they poking their noses into our internal affairs. In international relations, you respect the internal affairs of other countries. Perhaps. They, they, this one talking about what they don't understand. Because they do not. Their statement shows that they do not even understand what is going on in Nigeria. Okay. We live in this country and we know what is So happening. are you saying this is not a reality in the country right now? It, it, it is, like the Minister of Information has said, a discredited narrative. It's okay, a perhaps narrative if, that is not real. Perhaps if you will not want to take the, the report, they put out some recommendations, what I would like to put to you. And they said uh, they would like to advise and support the Nigerian government in the development of counter-radicalization and de-radicalization program. The question is, is the government willing to receive such help? A any, any help that is genuine will be accepted. Any help that has no strings attached will be accepted. But when you want to shove things down our throats, we'll say, oh, no, thank you. You, you think there are strings attached? To if there well? are. If those offers are coming from their own assessment of the internal situation in Nigeria, which we don't agree with, then we can tell them, please keep your offer. But you know Nigeria is a signatory to the international peer review mechanism. And 
saying that we don't want this. Don't you think that's inconsistent? I have not said we will say so. But I have not, no, Nigeria has not said so. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Nigeria has not said so. But Nigeria will look at every offer critically. Anyone that is like a Greek gift, we have the right to say no. But if you feel that, uh, just, just to get Nigerians to understand the, the government's position, you, you have an understanding or you believe that the U.S. government is sort of book nosing into the affairs of the country. But let me give you another recommendation from this document. And this is what the government of the United States says, that the Nigerian government should acknowledge the significant threats posed by Boko Haram and ISIS uh, to prioritize greater support to both military and non-military efforts to counter insurgency and to protect the rights of the Nigerian press to report on the continuing war. Is this something the government, on one hand, would admit to, uh, saying I, acknowledge the threats and then give the press more the, freedom? The, the question is, what is new in what you have just read? Absolutely nothing new. It's a rehash. It's a rehash of what has been happening in the country. There is absolutely nothing new to it. So if they don't have anything new to say, why don't they face their own internal issues? There are many. There so are many. will Nigeria be, be writing an official response to this report? You, you, you know that my responsibility is to speak on policies that have been made, not policies that are yet to be made. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the report came out just over this weekend, so government has not even considered it, if it will consider it at all. all right. So it's premature. So one, one, one final thing on this issue. Now, I, I know you are close to the president, you're the president's media advisor. Yes. Uh, has the president heard about this report and uh, what are his thoughts about it? The, the president has an helicopter view of things happening in the country. Anything that happens, it's a matter of minutes. He can get a report on it. But I'm in Lagos now, and the president is in Abuja. So I can't say definitively that he has seen it. But if I was in Abuja and I've been able to confirm that he has a report, I will tell you. But one thing you can be sure of is that as president of the country, he has a broad view of what is happening in the country, and it's a matter of minutes before it gets briefed. But I remember just a few days back, we had an interview with you, and uh, it sort of, you know, it went viral. And this interview was about the, the human rights question of the country. And uh, the question which was put to you was saying that, you know, a lot of Nigerians are concerned currently about what human rights seem to be in the country, their perception. And you made that statement saying that this is perhaps the voice of a vocal minority. Is that a perspective you still hold? Till tomorrow, till next week, till next year, I hold it. So why do you have statistics to back that? Do you have data to know that, okay, there are 200 million people in Nigeria and just about you know, 1,000 or 100,000 people One of them just left your studio and you heard how he was yapping and playing to the gallery. Is a vocal minority. So, uh, <laughs> Mr. Adishna, if we were to go by the laws of statistics, there are three of us, right? Yes. You, uh, myself, and Mr. Shomi. Yes. If Mr. Shomi is one of three, that's 30%. That's surely not, that's not a minority. No, no. When you are talking of 200 In million. fact, yes. it's just two of you. I'm out of this. Yes. And that's 50%. Yes. Let's just say. No, 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 no. I, I, I won't agree with your submission. Okay, because so you are, I think you should you give are, me a counter you are, you submission. Are a, you are in a country of 200 million, precisely 198 million, the last uh, statistics we got, 198 million people. Now, one, two, three people. Each time they say they are violating human rights in Nigeria, you ask them, who and who and who are the objects of this violation? They mentioned one, two, three, and it ends there. Three people out of 198 million. And it's that same three people you continue to recycle day after day. And we have said when things that look like human rights are on collision course with national security, national security must always predominate because National security affects 198 million. So what happens to the rule of law then? The rule of law is well and alive, sacrosanct, sacrosanct. Even but when national security is at stake, it must predominate over certain other considerations. All right, uh, Mr. Adishan, I know this is an ongoing conversation, but yes. let's, let's, let's talk about 
other issues of state of the nation. And, and this one is perhaps very important to Nigerians. The, the, the promise of lifting 100 million people out of poverty over the next 10 years, just before the president's you know, first tenure, the, the plan was create 3 million jobs. That's about a, a million job per year. And some other promises that have been made. But one particular one that has been of concern to a lot of Nigerians is a social investment program. So what is the state of SIPs right now? It's moving forward. SIP started, and there are some, the many variants under it. You have the school feeding program, you have the conditional cash transfer, you have the GEEP, you have about four or five things under SIP. We are making progress. Are, are you encountering any difficulty, obstacle in the SIPs? Uh, I, I won't be able to talk conclusively on that because you know that. Uh, the, there was a transition recently. The SIP used to be under the office of the vice president and then is now, now been moved to the new Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs. So I think that there will be some settling down process going on. But you, I, I don't think there's any major problem with the SIP. Okay, so just to give us a sense, because Nigerians want to know, like, how long will this process take before it probably restarts or kickstarts again? The same people that were running the SIP under the vice president's office still run it under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Mrs. Miriam Ways is a special advisor to the president on SIP. She's still there. So I don't think there is any major dislocation. You know, the reason I ask about the SIP is, is this is vital to the promise of lifting Nigerians out of poverty from the you know 10,000 Nairas that are given uh, for market money and other mm. intervention programs. If you check the poverty clock, it says about 91 million Nigerians are in extreme poverty. On one hand, when you see figures like that, how do you respond? I'm just curious. What goes through your mind? That is why government exists, to make sure that there is a change. The poverty clock has been ticking since when? since as far back as we had Nigeria. And it is increasing. And it, it keeps ticking. And that is why you have government. Government is there to ensure that the spectacle changes. You know, what I said earlier is the poverty clock keeps ticking. It keeps increasing. I, I believe you're trying to say government is there to reverse yes. that trend. But yes. from what we have seen so far, it keeps increasing. It, it, it is not magic. It's not magic. It's not something you snap the finger, and it gets reversed. It's something that is going to be cumulative. You have talked about SIP now. You have many things under it, like I said earlier. All of them will accumulate after some time and make a dent on the poverty situation. And going forward, it may then begin to reduce. Let's add the 23.1% uh, unemployment rate also, because these are figures people see. Nigerians see on a daily basis. They see the poverty clock. They see the unemployment figures and other figures. And they wonder, how did we get to this point? So how are we trying to reverse that trend? We're, we're still expecting, by the way, we're still expecting latest data. I'm sorry about that. From the NBS. But what are we doing to reverse that trend? Recall the 2015 election when APC came to power. That unemployment rate was one of the things they used to campaign. That shows you that even in 2015, it was well and alive. And since then, is then the, the party has been working to reverse the situation. So it's not as if poverty just came suddenly on the country. It had always been there. So two questions before we close. Yes. Uh, on one hand, there's next year. There's a whole year ahead of us. And there's also that plan, 100 million people out of poverty. Do you think we're still on course to achieve that on one hand? And what are the plans for next year? I think we are just even beginning. The program of the uh, 100 million in 10 years was unfolded on June 12th. How many have we done so far? No, 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 no. <laughs> that is not the way to approach it. Like I told you, it's going to be a cumulation. It, it's not as if you'll be counting one, two, three per day. No. After a while, you look at policies and you see their impact and effects. That's the way it goes. Okay. It's not that, it, that's the first part. And then the second part of the question is what? About the next year. Next year, yeah. 2020. I think things are looking good, looking quite good. What are the priority areas of the administration? We will secure the country.
look back in the past weeks, months, it has been better than it has ever been. And then another promise is that we will revive the economy. Look at the indices. Things are looking up. Right. Some people, if you have a glass uh, uh, with water in it, and it's halfway filled. I, I, I know where you're yeah, going. Yeah, some people full, see it as half, half full. Empty. Some see it as half empty. Okay, well. It depends on how people see it. But I'd like to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Femi Adishino. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. He is the media advisor to the president. Thank you for your time on the program. Thank you.